I quit Siege. Kind of. Not clickbait. I haven't been playing Siege as much over the past three months or so. I've been playing a lot of single player games instead. Armored Core 6, Baldur's Gate 3. I'm really worn out with live service multiplayer in general. And it's not necessarily because of anything Ubisoft has done. It's not because of anything in terms of Siege balancing. It really just has a lot to do with the community, the way that they perceive the ranked ladder climbing system and how the lack of value in the ranked ladder climbing system has pretty much uh, dissuaded me from trying to ranked ladder climb at all so in this video i'm going to talk about all that and we'll allude to some things about live service gaming as well but rank 2.0 is in a weird state it's devalued the experience for me and the community isn't really helping Hey guys, this video was sponsored by Raycon, of which I am using some of their earbuds that they sent to me at the gym before I come back and finish editing this video. So let's hit the treadmill. So as far as what you're paying for, the quality of the audio is really good. It has a pretty nice mix of frequency from, uh, from low to high. I find that the mid frequency is particularly good for this price point of earbuds. But what I really like about them is that they don't fall out of your ears. I'm a big fan of these earbuds. These things are legit. Usually in the audio world, it's a lot of diminishing returns in the amount of money that you put in versus what you get. I can safely say that Raycon is 100% worth the value you're putting in and then some. This is really good stuff. But yeah, the main thing about Raycon is that you're gonna get premium audio quality that they're known for in either the form of their earbuds or their headphones at a price point that's not gonna kill your wallet. Raycon stuff gets tens of thousands of five-star reviews. They are doing an early Black Friday sale. So here's what you need to know. 20% off of everything with some sales going as much as 50% off on certain products. Get an early start on the holiday sales by shopping Raycon's early Black Friday sales today. Go to buyraycon.com slash Gregor. You'll get 20 to 50% off site-wide. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video and hooking me up with some good tech. I'm starting to notice with a lot of these live service FPS games that the communities are very off-putting. Ranked allegedly means nothing, but the same people who harp on that point will play and act like there's money on the line. There's not a lot of room for experimentation. Everything has to follow this very concrete kind of cookie cutter formula. In a game that has so many different variables going on and so many different ways to skin a cat, it's just really boring seeing the game played out the same way every single time. You'll have your basic setup, you'll have your basic holes and walls, and then everyone will just go gunfight and so there's not a lot really going on in the late stages of the game that I find particularly exciting when those interactions do crop up they are really enjoyable and I don't get them from any other game but siege but I am finding them happen a lot less now and I think what's happening is people are pivoting to the very simple gunner focused kinds of operators that have a really high amount of guaranteed value right not necessarily because they're the best characters but picking them incurs the least amount of risk and that risk of course is will I lose this game will Will I rank down? Will I lose ELO? So when people say that rank doesn't mean anything, oh, anybody can get champ, I usually think they're full of it because the only people that are really in a position to make that kind of claim are people who play the game for a living, like content creators, streamers, professional players who have a ton of investment in it. These are the people who usually bring this claim up. The vast overwhelming majority of people who play Siege have a hard time hitting champ. That is a fact. My citation is the logarithmic curve cited for the distribution of ranks in Siege. This is the top end of the curve. This is not a large chunk of the population. So either people play the game a lot to be in this, you know, 5% or so distribution. Uh, that's where the battle pass argument comes from. Or they're good enough to get there a lot more quickly. But regardless of what you think, your mileage may vary on whether it's a significant time investment or a game knowledge investment to hit champ. And so regardless of what anybody thinks, people still think champ holds some kind of prestige to it. And when your only really marketable product that you have in Siege is the live service multiplayer experience, if ranked doesn't quote mean anything, then we're not really selling anything here. We're just selling the experience of playing Siege, which a lot of people do like, don't get me wrong, but I like having a goal to work towards. And if that goal supposedly doesn't mean anything, then what the hell's the point of me ladder climbing? 
So I decided to play some single player games because I can't be bothered to solo queue most of the time. I'm getting back into it. I think Ubisoft has a good idea of where they want to take the game, but it's going to take some time for it to get there. And I'm noticing that this is a pattern repeated with a lot of live service multiplayer games. People are getting kind of worn out with the culture of these games because esports, let's face it, is just not as popular as it used to be. And the only really predominantly mainstream esports anymore are Counter-Strike, Rocket League, Dota, and League of Legends. I guess throw Valorant in there as well. Everything else is just kind of there. Like it's not completely irrelevant, but it doesn't have the same kind of cultural pull. I hate to break it to most people, but the forklift operator who just got into the game a month ago has no idea their shield placement is bad. And they don't know that their shield placement is bad because they're stupid. They don't know because the game is really complicated. It has a lot of different moving parts to it. And I think people who spend five hours a day playing it really take that for granted. You know, when they first started playing the game, they had no idea what the hell they were doing either. You start to see this weird kind of stratification of communities in live service games where you have the population of the game who's been playing it like a sport for hours and hours on end versus new people who try to get into it and are overwhelmed by the information so they just go and play a single player game instead and i think the market is moving this way we're seeing a lot of promotional material in a weird sort of return to the form of many AAA gaming companies a la the xbox 360 era with standalone titles and robust single player experiences assassin's creed mirage spider-man 2 armor core Drum 6 right Baldur's Gate 3, these are all just a few examples. The only multiplayer game I've seen any mainstream buzz about is Counter-Strike 2. Every multiplayer live service game just kind of markets to their little multiplayer live service island, the Destiny 2 island, the Valorant island, the Siege island, and they just kind of live them on themselves. The thing that's always been difficult for me to surmount as a content creator in terms of what I try to get people to watch is, you know, the complexity of the game. And when you're trying to learn the game, I always reference the professional aspect of its play, which is really difficult to do with Siege because if you just put Pro League in a title, it can be enough to tank the video because people hate Siege Esports. It's like, it is very difficult to market Siege Esports to the mainstream of Siege players. And people have a number of different solutions for this. They talk about the marketing. They talk about the promotional material. They talk about the advertising budget. They talk about the business model. I think the conversation that nobody wants to have is that the game is just really complicated. When it's played at a professional level, that level of complexity is not really possible to see for most people. So the game is confusing to watch and relate to. And narratively and socially, the emotional connection is really difficult to establish with a new person. Combine that with this constant narrative that rank doesn't mean anything while people still go around talking about their rank like it means something. I think it's understated how much the average person observes that phenomenon and just kind of mentally checks out of really trying to grind the game from a ground up level. Most people just boot up the game, are aware that they're kind of shit and just don't care. And that's the most frustrating part about Rank 2.0 for me. It's not even Ranked 2.0. It's how people interact with Ranked 2.0 that irritates me. I end up talking more about Rank 2.0 than I talk about Siege. He's drag. It's okay. Which defeats the purpose of Ranked 2.0 because the whole point of Ranked is to learn the game and get better but I end up talking about the matchmaking more than I do helping people get better at the game, which is just really boring. I know that anecdotal evidence doesn't really account for much, but in my personal experience, I get pretty competitive back and forth games that tend to be pretty close against pretty competent players. I play in the diamond to champion low range, and I don't play lights out on the scoreboard, but I know the baby steps of how to get the wall open, clear roamers, watch flanks, hold sight. I'm really good at the rudimentary stuff. That's what makes you good at Siege, is the little stuff. But people spend more time getting mad about the gunfight that they lost than all the other steps involved that took place before the gunfight even happened. If you lose your one, you lose your one, man. I know that losing your 1v1 sucks sometimes. I've had plenty of gunfights in Siege where I'm like, if I ate breakfast that morning, then I probably would have won that. But like, it's just, that's how it shakes out sometimes. And you got to understand that you're not playing for money. You should be playing because you want to, not because of some kind of outcome that you are seeking out externally from the validation of other people.
what I hear more when we talk about ranked isn't necessarily how can I get better? It's how can I get over the fear of failure? How can I get over the discomfort of failing? Which is a totally different thing. And the esports community ends up unfairly taking a lot of flack for the behavior of what a bunch of 17 year old dorks do in a ranked lobby. Being a toxic player has nothing to do with how invested you are in the esports component of the game. You can be a casual shitter and you can be toxic. You can be an esports sweat and you can still be toxic. It comes down to the individual, but we have this weird kind of like me versus them kind of community stratification in every live surface game where it's like, oh, the esports sweats ruin it. Oh, the casuals just can't keep up and they don't understand. Where I think that the healthy middle ground is the solution for a lot of these problems, but we're not willing to go that route because if we don't pivot to one or the other, we're afraid of losing a lot of market share. So we have this common prevailing argument that rank 2.0 doesn't mean anything because anyone can get champ, but then people won't shut up about the freaking champ charm. Nobody can agree on what makes you good at Rainbow Six Siege anymore, so the vast majority of people just play the game to play it, and then some of them will go on Discord and then write five paragraph essays about how actually it's not their fault that they're stuck in Silver Elo. I'm looking at you, Discord, my Discord community. I think we need to get over this idea that you have to be lights out at a video game to enjoy playing it in multiplayer. If you're not good at a game, you should be allowed. You should be allowed to not be good at a video game. That is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. It is not hurting anyone. You can have dog meat mechanics and still be a good team player if you just listen, call out, use drones, use intel, do the little things right. You're going to be a bigger credit to your team than somebody who's difficult to work with goes off and does their own thing and maybe has like one really good round, but they make like three kamikaze plays in a row and then they get mad because the team isn't on the same page as them. And I'm not saying that you can't play lights out. I'm not saying that you can't have some of those double digit games where you just frag out and drop 15 kills, but that's not going to happen all of the time. And more importantly, it's going to make it difficult for you to make friends. Like, do you want friends? Do you want friends to play Rainbow Six with? Like, what matters to you more? Siege has this really weird gatekeeping problem. Like, it's a very complex game, and then we get mad at people when they understandably have a hard time learning it. That's not a great way to foster a community. That's not a great way to promote your esports scene either. If you go up to an average person on the street and you tell them, I am rank in Rainbow Six Siege, they're not going to know what the hell you're talking about. And if you think this only applies to boomers who can't keep up, right, mechanically, that's not true. I think a lot of teenagers just see how complex Siege is. They see how the community behaves with newcomers, and then they just go play like Deep Rock Galactic or something. You have veteran FPS players who, by every metric, have pretty decent FPS fundamentals that struggle hard with this game's initial learning curve. Very often. So we can't have it both ways. We can't go around talking about how rank 2.0 doesn't mean anything and then prescribe all of these emotional attachments to what's basically a vanity metric. The average person does not care about being quote unquote good at a video game. That is something for a very particular kind of person. The average person does not care about esports. Esports can only be modeled like traditional sports if it has a big following. As always with the Siege community, it's a matter of Siege players not knowing what they want. I don't think Ubisoft knows what they want. They being Siege players. And I think we're all just kind of stuck here. We all have this different idea of how to set up the site, right? In a metaphorical sense, how we want to set up the Siege site. And we can't agree on what we want to do. I just remember a point in my life where I didn't care if I was good at a video game or not, and that was good enough for me. And I wonder if other people have lost that, have, uh, have lost sight of that. It's meant to entertain you. I take issue with dorks who keep yapping about how esports is ruining gaming. I take issue with dorks who think that it's the only thing that matters. Uh, the internet has ruined everything. We can't have nice things, ranked 2.0 included. What do you guys think of the current landscape of live service multiplayer games? Let me know in the comments. I think this could spark an interesting conversation, and I'm, I'm curious what you guys have to say. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Deuces.